contract isn't signed yet. I'm told it will be signed Monday. Jalen's actually not in town yet, but it's done. There's no reason to think it's going to fall apart. There isn't going to be some 12th hour demand that someone makes that it all craters. It's done. They trust each other. It's just a matter of him signing it. Howie Roseman, pre-draft press conference yesterday, talking about the deal. Not official yet, but official that will keep Jalen Hurts in town for up to six more seasons. Here he is. By doing it at the time we did um, and by um, being able to work together to do things that were important to them and important to us. And for us, it's about flexibility around him. You know, this is the ultimate team game and he needs to have talented people around him. Uh, Jalen recognized that. Nicole recognized that. And so to be able to do this in a way that uh, also gives us an opportunity to get good players. Yeah, it does, and that's the goal here. Getting your quarterback early, getting him to sign a deal that he can't refuse. That's the other side of this, too. When you're talking about a guy who came into the league at pick number 53, I think it's it's easier to get a guy like that to say yes to a good deal and not get him to say, I'll wait for a great deal. I'll let it play out another year. I'll go toward franchise tag territory and do that. He's never gotten a huge contract. This is it. And the opportunity is right there. So I think the Eagles knew that the right thing to do for them was to put good, not great money on the table. And when the deal is finalized, we'll be able to see with certainty where it is, how it compares to other contracts, how much of a a strong point it's going to be for teams negotiating contracts for quarterbacks in the coming months how much of a strong point it'll be for the players but I I just feel like it's one of those where the Eagles knew now's the time to move now's the time to make the commitment because it's only going to get more expensive if we wait so it was smart for the Eagles to make their move because I think it's easier to get a Jalen Hurts to say yes to an offer that maybe a guy who was taken third overall would say man that's good but I'll wait another year so I think it worked out perfectly for both sides, and now they do have that flexibility, Peter, to keep putting great players around Jalen Hurts into the future. You know, I was stunned, as I think probably most people were, to see the salary cap hits in the first three years of the deal. They're all incredibly reasonable. Uh, And what is interesting to me about this contract is that, you know, I thought Howie Roseman made it very, very clear here that when he did this contract with Jalen Hurts and his agent, Nicole Lynn, I think the biggest part of the negotiations were exactly what happened with Tom Brady. And I mean this, this was two decades ago this off season when Tom Brady, uh, you know, negotiated for his second contract. And he said words to this effect to the New England Patriots. And we'll find out whatever was said back and forth during negotiations. But, and again, these this is not a direct quote in any way, but I'm just, here was Tom Brady's feeling. I can make enough money off the field to make up for whatever I'm not going to make if I tried to get every last dime out of this negotiation. So as long as you agree to pay other players to spend to the cap every year, I'm fine with not being the highest paid quarterback in football. And and look, I think what you're going to see, uh, and, and Mike, isn't it interesting that 10 years ago this month, the highest paid player in, the, in NFL history by average per year contract 10 years ago was Joe Flacco at 20.1 million. Yep. Yep. Okay? Yep. And... Today, exactly 10 years later, uh, that average salary is $51 million at the quarterback position. Now, I think a lot of people are going to hear that, Mike, and they're going to say, this is outrageous. Player salaries are through the roof. It's stupid. I hate football. Uh, you know, be reasonable. It's idiotic. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to make this point about it. <clears throat> Between... 2013 and 2023, the salary cap has gone up $102 million. And so 
if the salary cap goes up 102 million in 10 years and you take let's just say one third of that and pay it to the guy who is vastly the most important player in your franchise where's the injustice i don't what's so bad about that mike we have to get used to in this business where franchises rise in value from four and a half billion in one year to six billion the next year. And we have to get used to the fact that it is all monopoly money. And if the owners can make a sick, stupid, ridiculous amount of money when they sell their franchises after running it into the ground for a quarter century, why can't a quarterback make uh, 50 million a year. I, and again, I understand that people get upset when we talk about that, but it is all relative. Well, Peter, I've been saying that for years because the fans get up in arms when the players get these big contracts and they never consider that the salary cap keeps going up, that everyone is getting rich, that the players have no equity whatsoever. All they're ever going to make is what they're able to, to finagle from the teams during their careers. In grand scheme of things, you got a limited number of years where you are at that maximum earning capacity. So the average per year always, always has to be considered within the context of the size of the salary cap and the ever-inflating franchise values. And here's the other side of it, too. And this is what agents do. I've never encountered any agent, maybe one, maybe one, who sees it this way. When you do an extension for five years at $255 million of a guy who's got one year left at $4 million, he's not signing a five-year $255 million contract. He's signing a six-year $259 million contract, which is only $43 million, which only $43. We should all be so underpaid. But still, the way that the agents try to one-up each other and sell these things as greater than they are, what happens? They get sold as greater than they are. This is a $43 million deal, and we won't know what it's truly worth until we're able to delve into the details, see what the true commitment is at signing, how many years the Eagles are tied to this, how backloaded it is to drive up the APY, which happens with some frequency in the NFL because the agents want to be able to say, I negotiated the richest deal in NFL history, regardless of whether that money's ever paid out. Those are all things that get lost and they always will get lost behind the headline. And it, like you said, $51 yeah. million and people get mad at the player and they don't think about anything else. I looked up the salary cap when they first – do you remember what the salary cap was for the, the full amount of each team when they first adopted it 30 years ago? $32 I guess, million. Yeah, I was going to say $32 million. Million. Sorry, yeah. I didn't give you a chance. I didn't give you a chance to finish. We didn't get to finish the Price is Right game. You would have won because you were under and you were close. <laughs> At 30 million. So 32 million, and now you got guys making 50 million or at least 40 million still, a lot more than ever before. But that's a product of the sport getting more and more popular all the time. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.